you know, whether it's doing a three, you know, the corporate world, we all do 360s. Any of us in leaderships have always done 360s where we have other people give feedback. And I've always found that really fascinating to kind of see where that gap was so you could start to close it. But it starts with knowing what you're for. And it's, you know, I, I think that's huge. And I wish more people would take that message and start to figure that out. Yeah, it's really a journey toward more emotional awareness and emotional intelligence. Yep. And and that's another thing that I think we're probably not teaching enough of in, in, in the academic realm is emotional intelligence. It's really the soft skills that make or break a career. I don't know, I know that, that we're teaching any of it, to tell you the <laughs> truth. That's why I think another a great question to ask is, to, to, to your point, is what's it like to be on the other side of me? You're, you're asking people, hey, what, what's it like to work with me? Yep. What's it like to be a be my friend yeah what's it like to be my coworker? and we've never been on the other side of us so we don't know so that information's out there yeah. <laughs> but if we don't ask it and if we don't go for it we'll be the only ones that don't have the answer do you think people are afraid to ask that absolutely and they should be afraid Kristen <laughs> I mean, yeah let's be honest. I'm afraid to ask my kid I have asked my kids that the kids give me the worst feedback they're the most brutally honest you I know exactly what it's like to be on the other side of me as a parent Right. Well, always, I so imagine fine. my world. I, I preached on this uh, several years ago, and so the staff would just sit me down and go, "Okay, you know, you remember you preached on that three years ago? Let me tell you what it's like to be on the other side of you right now." But dude, you're going to get three yeah. pieces of, in, of feedback. You're going to get some encouraging information. You're going to get some surprising information that you weren't aware of, and you're going to get your feelings hurt. Yeah. Um, but it will require courage to ask that question because what I've realized is if I don't answer, if I don't ask the question, yeah. it doesn't yeah. mean the information goes away. It's still there. I just don't have access to it. And when I don't have access to it, if I don't have the courage to go after it, then I'm not going to grow. And you know this yep. from all the success you've had. You can't have the success that you've had without being uncomfortable. And the reason I say that is growth mm -hmm. is uncomfortable. It's not. In oh, fact, yeah. the season I'm in right now, I mean, imagine a career change in the midst of a global pandemic. This is really stretching me. But I'm growing in leaps and bounds in ways that I probably wouldn't have if I just stayed um, in a job I loved, but uh, I felt called to a new season and I just feel the growth is happening, but it's very uncomfortable. It would, well, growth is supposed to be uncomfortable. If it, if it were comfortable, everybody would do it. But so, all right, so I, I have a question on that because, you know, I I saw when you made the announcement, I saw that and, you know, it was this was a big choice. And you mentioned in the middle of a global pandemic, and the way you said it, you said, I made a career change. You didn't make a career change. You basically up, up ended your entire world. So, and I've read some of the, the blog posts because you have a great, you know, kind of newsletter that comes out. So walk me through kind of what people can do and what the process you and Wendy went through to figure out, because that was a big change. I mean, you literally left a nice position and a lot of comfort and a big, big, big community to do something, I won't say completely different, but in a completely different realm. So what, I mean, there was, had to have been a lot of fear in that. There is a lot of fear. There's, I think back. you wrote about that this week. So what, what's the process? I mean, as people are looking at this, cause a lot of people lost jobs last year and are still unemployed. I mean, um, I have a family, you know, family member who's been unemployed for over a year now and it's hard to find stuff. So with all the fear out there, what do you do to move forward or what would you encourage people to do so they don't just stay frozen? Right. Well, fortunately for Wendy and me, we've been through seasons like this before. Uh, when I was at Chick-fil-A and left to help start Buckhead Church in the early days of Buckhead Church, that was a big move. Yep. And because back in the day, Kristen, I mean, right now, you know, multi-site video church, mm -hmm. you know, churches do that all over the world. Buckhead was one of the first. So I'm leaving a very stable job with people I love, a job I love, yep. to go yep. help start a church where the preacher's on video. It was just the most bizarre, crazy thing. Yeah. But we had done the due diligence. Part of it was um, there's a biblical principle, whether you what, whatever you might believe about the Bible, there's a biblical principle that I think is true. Uh, and that is plans fail for lack of advisors, but with counsel plans succeed. And so we had a lot of people in our life looking at that situation and going, yes, we feel like this is the right thing for you to do. 
And, we and got you mentioned so in your, when you wrote about this, sorry to cut you off, you, you wrote about this this week or last week or something, and you mentioned that the counsel you sought were from people that knew you guys, knew your hearts, knew your gifts. Because mm-hmm. sometimes we, and part of my you're not for everyone, is that you, not everybody knows that. You know, so sometimes I'll see people seeking counsel from so many people that don't have a vested interest, that don't know their hearts, and that's not the right, wise way to seek counsel. So were you guys pretty determined in who you were seeking it from? Yes, that, that's a great point. In, in fact, you can ask too many people. Right. Uh, so I see it's that not the numbers. Lot. It's not the numbers of people. It's the, I don't, I don't like to say quality of people, but it's yep. the quality of the counsel that you're getting. For example, when we left, so we launched Buckhead Church, and that's an incredible, you know, so many incredible mm-hmm. memories, eight-year run. Uh, Andy Stanley asked me to, Wendy and me, to launch Gwinnett Church. Mm-hmm. So we had a group, did the same thing. Group of advisors yep. sat down, looked at this, and everybody gave me a green light. Well, the same people that gave me the green light for the Buckhead to Gwinnett Church decision were the same people that gave me the green light for this decision. Okay. And so track record, multi-year track record in terms of knowing uh, knowing us. And uh, for example, I have a personal board of advisors, which I would highly recommend huge, for anyone. Huge, yep, And huge. Uh, we meet once a quarter and then Wendy comes in and meets um, occasionally as well. And if so for that particular board, if I had gotten a red light from any of them, we would have slowed down. And we actually did slow down when the, when the pandemic hit because we were yeah. going to leave in the spring because we had targeted, um, we began to sense a year and a half ago that when Cole graduated from high school and we became empty nesters, that, that would be a new season for us. And it was actually yeah. brought to our attention with our board of advisors when they said, hey, wh- what are you thinking about your empty nesting years? And I thought, well, I'm not really thinking about anything. And they said, well, yeah. you need to pay attention to that. Um, and so that really began a series of conversations. And, uh, and that's about when the book came, the book came out when? When did it, it came out before the, the pandemic. Book.